Welcome to another screencast. This is the Geologic History of New York State, Earth Science Reference Table, pages 8 and 9. You should have this handy dandy fun sheet in front of you while you go through this. Um, it will help you get most of the answers, if not all of them. It doesn't go in the order of it, but it will help you decipher the pages to make it easier for you to finish this fun sheet. So now I'm going to summer, summon my impersonation powers, and I'm going to impersonate an 8th grade science teacher. Let's see if you can guess who it is. Okay, take a look at the top of this reference table page. You have an eon, an era, period, epoch, and these represent the time on Earth. You have life on Earth, New York State Rock Record, time distribution of fossils, important geologic events in New York, and then inferred positions of Earth's land masses. We're going to go through this and break it down, pretty much. What better way to start it off with a little blast from the past, and that would be very difficult for you to see from that vantage point, but you could look on your reference table or through some digital wizardry, you can make it a little bit bigger, and you can see that blast from the past is the estimated time of origin of Earth in the solar system. Hopefully that sounds very familiar to you. 4,600 million years ago, and look at those graphics to further emphasize the point. Uh, yes, in fact, it's a blast from the past. Okay, so let's break down our times. We're going to start with eon, because an eon is the largest unit here. Okay, this will be found right here on the left-hand side. Eons are broken down into the Precambrian and the Phanerozoic Aeon. Then you can see that Precambrian is further broken down to the Proterozoic and the Archean. And each of those are broken down to either early, middle, or late. Okay, let's take a closer look. Here it says millions of years ago. It can also be MYA, if you're gonna text it to your friends. So these large boxes, if you look, you have 2,000 million years ago. You have 3,000 million years ago. So if you're counting here, these are counting by 500 million years. Up here, these smaller boxes are counting by hundreds. So you have 100 million years in the small boxes. Okay, so next we're going to break down the Phanerozoic Aeon, which is broken down into eras. The Phanerozoic is broken down into the Cenozoic Era, the Mesozoic Era, and the Paleozoic Era. Let's take a closer look at that. There it is in all its glory. All right, so now we're back at the reference table. We broke down eons to eras. Now we're going to break down our era into periods and epochs, or some might say epochs, which sounds like a weird animal. Here we go. So the Paleozoic Era is broken into the Permian period, you have the, what is that, Carboniferous, the Devonian, the Silurian, the Ordovocan, and the Cambrian period. The Mesozoic era is broken down into the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous period. And then the Cenozoic era is broken down into the Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary period. Then you can see that each one of those periods is broken down even further to epochs or epics. Take a look at the Cambrian. You have early, middle, and late over here. Not very exciting. Most of it is early, middle, and late. Um, until you get to the Paleogene, then you can see that it's broken down into very specific epochs. Okay, or the Neogene and the Quaternary is broken down. Right now, in this current day and age, we are in the Holocene epoch. Oh, and Right here next to that, you have a close-up look at millions of years ago. So this gets a little bit more specific than what we saw on your left-hand side. So before we move on to life on Earth, it's important to take a break, take a closer look at something that is extremely significant in terms of the development of life on Earth. So if we look at this particular area over here, and again, reading at that resolution would be quite difficult. So instead, we're going to zoom in through the magic of digital, digital wizardry. And we see that oceanic oxygen produced by cyanobacteria combines with iron, forming iron oxide layers on the ocean floor. 
And then later on, oceanic oxygen begins to enter the atmosphere, which is very important for oxygen-breathing organisms like ourselves. Well, this starts to happen. We kind of zoomed out of it, but if you look where this little bracket ends, it starts to happen in the middle Archean, um, and it ends in the early Proterozoic. Not, not that it ended, not that it stopped happening, but that's where this uh, transition actually happened, which is significant for life on Earth. And so if you look, you can see we go back to the main page, um, and if you take a look at some major events that happen that really help the uh, division of errors. You might have heard the term the end of an era uh, when certain things happen, and that's exactly what happens when we look at the geologic history of Earth. So these major events, the division of the Mesozoic, for example, um, and I'm just going to take away the lines for a second. When we zoom in there later on, we're going to see that's a major event in life that helps the end of the Paleozoic, the end of an era, and the beginning of the Mesozoic, and then the end of the Mesozoic and the beginning of the Cenozoic is major events that happen with life, or mass extinctions for that matter. So those are the dividing lines, and when we look in closer at that, and we, again, through digital wizardry, we can actually show you these things. So mass extinction of many land and marine organisms, including trilobites, happens here between the Permian and the Triassic. And then later on, the mass extinction of dinosaurs, which you're all probably very familiar with. That's that number of 65 million years ago, probably from Jurassic Park, perhaps, might be fresh in your mind. So here, the mass extinction of many land and marine organisms, including trilobites, happens at the end of the Paleozoic era and the beginning of the Mesozoic era. And then the Mesozoic era ends and the Cenozoic era begins with the mass extinction of dinosaurs, aminoids, and many land plants. So major mass extinctions ending eras and beginning other eras. Very exciting. And another thing of interest of life on Earth is this particular area over here. And if you take a look, um, abundant stromatolites uh, happening about 1,300 million years ago. And this first multicellular soft-bodied marine organisms, uh, kind of an interesting idea, this soft-bodied marine organism. So do you think you get a lot of fossils with that, soft-bodied? Not until we get great diversity of life forms with shelly parts, the shelly parts that can be preserved in rocks. What type of rocks? Sedimentary rocks give us the fossils that then give us that life record um, that can maintain itself and be preserved and we can examine and see. Or another way to say it is soft-bodied marine organisms equals no fossils. See, pointing to it. Ooh, look at that, huh? Pretty nice. And then life forms with shelly parts equals fossils. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, boy. Very exciting. So going back to your timetable here, if you look, you don't have a great diversity of life occurring really in the Precambrian eon. Most of the Precambrian eon does not have a great diversity of life. It's not until the Phanerozoic eon or the beginning of the Paleozoic era that we start to get a great diversity of life. So to illustrate our great diversity of life, you can look at the bottom here. You have some index fossils, some very important index fossils labeled A through Z. And those correspond with the time distribution of fossils right here. You can see it kind of looks like a bar graph. We're going to take a look at how to read this. So here we have our index fossils. And let's start with an easy one here. We have L. I like L. He looks like a dinosaur. And if you ask me to pronounce the real name of what that is, I don't know, was it Coley? Coley? Forget it. So L is a dinosaur. Right here you can see L on your table over here. Now, if you were asked when did this organism exist, you would say in the late Triassic. That's when this organism existed. Now, you can see this bar graph says dinosaurs. L is one of the dinosaurs. L in particular, though, existed during the late Triassic. But there were other dinosaurs that existed up until the late Cretaceous. Now, if you notice, the bar graph ends here for the dinosaurs. And if you look over here, you have mass extinction of dinosaurs, which is why you don't have, well, you don't have any more dinosaurs. They died. So let's highlight this to make it really fancy. There you go, L. All right, then we're going to take a look at S, because I can pronounce that one. It's a condor, which is a bird, and I like birds. All right, so S, hold on, wait, wait, I think there's something. There we go, S. 
exists right here. Now, birds existed. If you notice right here on Life on Earth, you have earliest birds, which is why the little bar graph starts here. However, the condor in particular existed, I'm going to take this away for a moment, existed during the Pleistocene epoch or epoch. Another thing that you can think about is you have L here, which again is that weirdo dinosaur guy. He existed, if we were asked how long ago did he exist, if you look back on your graph here, we said that you could see millions of years ago, and you can see L existed a little bit over 200 million years ago, because it tells you that right here is 200 million years, and L was a little bit more than that. A very significant life form, especially when it comes to index fossils, are trilobites. So we're going to take a look at trilobites in particular, uh, and you can see that we have A, B, and C over here that are all types of trilobites, and we zoom in. Uh, again, we're zooming in on the bar graph on the side, for the, the index fossil distribution, and we could see um, A, B, and C, and there's no chance of me being able to pronounce A, but B is cryptolithus. The only reason why I know that is because that's my rap name. I. You could see the evolution of life, and these are all trilobites, and you could see the evolution of how it changed over time, probably to meet the needs of the environment. Um, going back, though, you can see that the trilobites came into existence towards the, er, in the early Cambrian, and then they fizzled out or became extinct at the end, the late Permian, which again, what happens, we have the beginning of the end of an era, the Paleozoic, and the beginning of the Mesozoic, where the trilobites became extinct. And then putting some numbers to it to be a little more specific, they became extinct about 251 million years ago, the trilobites, that is. And through the beauty of computers, we are zooming in and piecing things together, and you could see that um, the trilobite A, right over here is A, um, and you could see right in words, earliest trilobites, right over here during the early, early Cambrian, easy for me to say. And you could further emphasize the fact by using the drawing tool and arrow tool. Now that is so cool. And one other one of significance is the placoderm fish, right over there. And you can see that it, if I'm going to have to kind of go back so I kind of cut it off, uh, the placoderm fish, that one in particular, came into existence around the late Devonian. And this particular organism has the distinction of living for the shortest amount of time. How sad. Probably the least exciting out of all of them is this New York rock record. And you can see, just based upon the bar graphs alone, um, within each time period, you have time periods that might be incomplete. They're missing rock records. Um, it was weathered and eroded away. And then there are other time periods where it's completely fully intact, which is kind of amazing that that's actually the case. Um, and you can see that this is sediment and that's bedrock. And they make a distinction based upon that as well. So a question could be what periods have a complete rock record? And if you just take a look at the bar graph, it kind of answers it for you. Whichever one is full for the whole period, then you know that that actually has a complete rock record. And those would be the periods that have complete rock records. I'm not going to bore you by reading them to you, because I could bore you in other ways. Important later on in geologic history is this thing called unconformity. So any period without a complete rock record is said to have an unconformity. Moving on to important geologic events in New York. There it is. So we're going to take a look at important geologic events in New York. Let's see. Right here is probably one of the most important geologic events where we have the intrusion of the Palisade Sill. And as you can see, Pangaea begins to break up. This perfectly corresponds over here with your inferred positions of Earth's land masses. You can see here that Pangaea existed about 232 million years ago. Okay, and right here it says forming Pangaea. So Pangaea was formed during the Alleghenian orogeny, and then it began to break up about 200 million years ago. And then you can see the inferred landmass right here. You can see them start to break apart. Now let's take a closer look at inferred positions of Earth's land masses. Here you go. This will give you some time frames here for your periods and epochs.
taking a look at the big picture here, you can see that almost all the important events that we have happened during the Phanerozoic Eon. There you go. Mr. Basham did a good job. And during the Precambrian, this is what happened. So you survived another screencast, so this is your reward for it. I'm really happy that dinosaurs don't exist today, because this might happen to you. It actually happened to me three times yesterday. Three times it happened to me. I think that's Mr. McNamara. It actually is him. It's, and that's no costume, by the way, either. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> this guy right here, absolutely genius. Pure genius. She's probably not talking to him anymore, but pure genius move. <laughs> I love it. Does she have high tops on? Yes, she, she does. does. Yeah, she cool. Does. Dinosaurs wearing sneakers. Yeah. <laughs>